Hey guys, a few weeks ago I posted a video setting up and configuring my Sonoff Wi-Fi controlled switch, but I didn't quite explain what I was going to be using it for. Um, as expected, many of you in the comments guessed it, it is for hot water heating, which seems to be the number one recommended use of excess solar. So over here on the right, this is my 50 gallon electric water heater. It's connected directly to the grid. And uh, you can see here on the label, it runs about 4,500 watts. Hot water currently consumes the most amount of power in my house. The label on the side estimates a yearly cost of $555. I don't know what that's based on. So what I actually did is I got this small water heater on Amazon. Uh, the label is in the back there. It's Reliance brand. It's a six gallon electric water heater, 120 volts. It's got 1600 watt heating element, I believe. And this was kind of the same deal as when I bought my inverter on Amazon. Um, the top case you'll see is dented here a little bit. So because it was dented and did have this outer cosmetic damage, I got it for about half price of what they sell for brand new. Uh, there's another dent down here in the bottom. Um, but that's not actually a dent on the tank. The steel tank on the inside has maybe about an inch of insulation the whole way around, and then there's this metal protective coating. So the dents are only on this metal coating. It's no big deal. The water heater works fine for me. Um, I'm fine to accept a 50% discount in exchange for a dented water heater. So the way I have this configured is my cold water supply comes down from here. This is well water and it goes into the six gallon water heater, which then heats it up and it comes out and then it goes down in here to my 50 gallon water heater where it's then stored and or heated if it starts to cool off and then it goes out to the fixtures in my house. So what's gonna happen is when there's excess solar power, this water heater will turn on based on that Sonoff controlled Wi-Fi switch and heat up the water that's in that tank and it'll remain on. So if there continues to be excess solar as water gets pushed through and you know, as you know, get a shower or doing dishes or whatnot, um, it'll continue to heat the water coming in. If there exists a time where there's not excess solar and this water heater turns off, cold water will simply pass through and come down in here to the main tank and be heated by grid power. When the water heater is on and it heats the water to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, obviously that 150 degrees Fahrenheit water comes down here into your 50 gallon tank and then it doesn't turn on at all. You know, it doesn't need any grid power because the water is already up to temperature. So the only work this water heater is doing is when, is when the water cools off like overnight or whatever and it needs to heat it back up or if this water heater's off. And of course, even if this water heater is turned on, if you're using more than six gallons of water, if you're taking a lengthy shower or something, um, you know, it, it's gonna, you're gonna use up the full six gallons in there. So maybe while this is heating back up, this will also be heating up from grid, the cold water that's been pushed through. But uh, basically it's functioning as a preheater to the electric grid water heater. Now, some of you may be asking why I didn't just put a single heating element in here, you know, either the upper or the lower heating element and connect that to the inverter. I just didn't want to mess with this water heater. You know, it's not that old. It's maybe two or three years old. And uh, it's 220 volt, whereas that's 110 volt. And then the other question I know I'm going to get is why didn't I just run a DC heating element instead of going through the inverter and having those losses and whatnot? There actually was some very nice 48 volt water heating elements I found on eBay, which go up to about 60 volts. So they'll accommodate the lithium ion range of voltages. Um, I just didn't want to have thick DC cables coming in over there and then running over here and you know, you're going to need some real thick cables to minimize losses at uh, 1500 watts or whatever to heat that water up. Plus you'll need a, a contactor that's capable of that and then a relay to flip that on. It's easier just to do a simple 110 volt water heater and plug that directly to your inverter. Over here is the control mechanism which turns the water heater on and off. Uh, this down here is the Sonoff. You saw me configuring my previous video. And then up here we have an RIB 2401B uh, relay. And the reason for this setup is because the Sonoff is rated a maximum of 10 amps. And even with that rating, I don't know that I would put a full 10 amps through it. This RIB 2401B is rated for 20 amps resistive load. Um, that means you can put like a heating element, a space heater, but nothing like a motor or anything that draws like a high inductive amount of current. Um, oh, you'll see it just shut off there. I'll explain how that works later. Anyway. Um, like I said, this is rated for 20 amps resistive load and I did open it up and the rating on the relay on the inside was like 30 or 40 amps or what So I would feel comfortable putting a full 20 amps through it Additionally, this device is UL listed for use in the United States. Unfortunately, the Sonoff is not So the way this works is the AC voltage comes in uh, the neutral passes straight through to the water heater and then a second neutral goes into the Sonoff and Then the hot lead comes in a hot lead goes to the Sonoff a hot lead goes up to the relay in this control, in this box, and then that hot comes back out and goes through to the water heater. 
So when this sawn-off turns on and off, it's essentially turning off the hot and the neutral that power the coil for this relay. So it's a relay that drives another relay. This is a single pole double throw relay, so it does have a normal open and a normal closed. And the only thing I haven't tested yet is I haven't put uh, the metal cover on here. I'm, I'm hoping the Wi-Fi and the sawn-off will be strong enough to go through the metal closure because I definitely want that cover put on. And uh, here's the box that that relay came in. You can see it's actually made in the United States, which is wonderful. So the lighting in this corner of the basement is going to be pretty bad. Hopefully you can see this. The breaker on the far right is a 20 amp uh, GFCI breaker. GFCI is ground fault current interrupt. So the way that works is your hot lead comes in, but the neutral lead also gets connected to the breaker. And then a lead comes out of the breaker and goes up to your neutral bar. So what happens is this breaker monitors the amount of current going through the, the hot lead and the amount of current going through the return or neutral lead. And if it senses a difference in the amount of current going through the hot versus going through the neutral, it'll flip the breaker off. And that's to prevent like if uh, current was coming back through the ground or going through your body, like if you're getting shocked. Or if like the heating element was cracked and some of it was going through the water and through the copper pipes and stuff like that. The GFCI breaker is not required by code on water heaters. I installed it there just as an extra protective measure. Here's what the breaker looks like. It's this 20 amp single pole uh, square D for that load center. These breakers do run about $45 a piece versus maybe $5 for a standard 20 amp. So they're by no means cheap, but it's just an extra level of protection I was fine, you know, investing in. I've got a small script set up that watches the output from the PCM60Xs and the inverter. And uh, it will turn that relay on when the battery state of charge reaches 75%. So that means you're producing extra power at that point. So you'll see now it is 74.5. So while we were talking earlier is when it shut it off because it started to drop below that 75% threshold. Um, so in this graph, you can see where the relay turned on for the first time and it heated up that six gallons of water. Um, it took about an hour to heat it up to temperature, 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And then this is the console that just runs that script. Um, it turned the water heater on at 1538 and then turned it off at 1943. Again, that's when we were watching it over there. It does have a, a 0.5% tolerance, so I have it set for 75%, but it's not going to turn it off until it hits 74.5%, so 0.5% below the threshold. And the reason for that is just so your relay is not constantly flipping on and off right as it gets around that 75% mark. I'm hoping this setup will come in handy with the amount of extra power I've been producing. I've been running this for about two weeks, uh, and there's been a couple days already where this water heater has just been on for like two or three days straight. And the couple of days that happened, my energy usage for my house was down to three kilowatt hours, you know, per day for those three days, which is extremely, extremely low. I've never seen it that low before. Um, and that three kilowatt hours that's left is probably like the stove when we were cooking dinner and just the lights that aren't on the inverter yet. So I'm very happy with this overall. So yeah, I just wanted to give you a walkthrough of what I was working on. Hopefully that helps somebody else out who may have similar questions or want to do similar things. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the description below. Thanks for watching.